Hi guys, my name is Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our Chainmail tutorial channel. Hey guys, big hi, hello, how are you? Thank you so much for popping in and joining me today. So today I'm just going to do a tutorial from our Mail It in Minutes playlist. And this one's for a necklace and you'll be utilizing the uh, full Persian sex in one weave for this. All right guys, let's just jump straight into it. Okay guys, here is a sample piece of the necklace that we'll be making today. And I'll just leave up on the screen now a list of the components so you can pause it and write that down. Otherwise, everything will be listed down in the description tab below if you prefer to look there later. I'm going to start this by doing the uh, full Persian piece. So to do that, um, just need to make up a chain of 2-2 two, two with your 6.25mm uh, ID rings. Now if you don't have 6.25mm you could use a quarter of an inch or you could even go up to 6.5. I chose to do 6.25 um, because it's a little bit tighter in the weave, a little bit um, stiffer and I felt that this particular uh, piece needed that. So this is a little bit smaller than I would normally use for a bracelet in full Persian. But as I said, I wanted this to be a little bit stiffer than I would ideally use for a bracelet. Okay, so once you've got your chain, your short chain of two, two rings, which is just two rings inside two rings like that, take up your twist tie and put it through one pair of rings. Holding on to your twist tie, we just want to fold these rings back one each side like you would with Byzantine. Just pinch it all the way back against the twist tie so that it looks like this. And we want to place our next rings in here in this gap here. So using the same size rings, we're going to open that up, go through those two rings there. Okay, pick them both up, close your ring up, and you'll feed a second ring through that same path. Okay, straight through there so that you've got two rings going through there. And your work should look like this. So it kind of looks like we're starting with a Byzantine here. Our next ring, we're going to open up that ring and put it through the two rings that we just placed. Okay, so those two rings there. But before we close it, we're going to sort of bring up our work so that we can now feed our ring through the two rings below it. Okay, can you see that? Going straight through those two rings and then we'll close that ring up. And our work should look like this. Okay, and we're going to do that to the other side because we want the other side of our weave to look the same. So again, going through those top two rings, bringing that ring down and going through the rings directly below that make the V, and then close that up. Okay, so that gives you two sections of full Persian. We're going to do a total of six. Now you can change this around and um, make it shorter or longer. It's totally up to you. I'm just going to do six pieces because you know, it's a nice easy, even number. Okay so our next ring again we're going to come in and we're not going to pick up the top pair of rings this time. We're going to pick up the second pair of rings from the end. So we're going to scoop those up, close that ring up, we're going to take up another ring and do the same thing, go through the same path, okay? So that we've got two rings now coming off the end of our work there. Our next rings are going to go through those two rings that we just placed. So we're going to pick up those two rings, but before we close this up, we're going to bring this ring down and we're going to put it through the two rings directly below as well. 
Okay, close that ring up. And do the same on the other side of your work. Okay, through the top two rings, bring it down, go through the next two rings. Close it up. Okay, so we just want to repeat that until we've got six sections of full Persian. So here we've got three, so one, two, three. You want to keep going until you've got six, Pers uh, six sections of Persian. So if you want to go ahead and whip that up, um, and I will meet you back here when uh, we're ready to move on. Okay, so here we are with our full Persian piece that is six units long. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to uh, remove the twist tie from the top and in here I'm going to take up the 16 gauge 5mm ID ring and I'm going to feed that through and pick up the second ring. So not the first ring, not the one on top, but the second ring. And then before... Um, I close that up I'm going to grab my toggle clasp and I'm going to take the round end okay I'm going to pop that onto there like that just straight through the round bit close that up take a second um, five millimeter ID ring and feed that through the same path so I'm just doubling that up to give it a little bit more security and to keep with the um, doubled rings that the full Persian uses. Okay, so that's that part done. Okay, so once you've got that part of your toggle clasp attached, I'm just going to attach the pendant to the other end. So put your bar part away. We're not finished with that yet. Taking up your 3.75mm uh, ID rings, grab whatever pendant or bead or whatever you like. I mean, you can put virtually anything on here. I just grabbed a couple of different things that I had lying around that you could pop on the end. If you've got a beautiful Swarovski pendant, something like that would look stunning. This is where you can make this um, necklace very much your own by putting whatever pendant or bead that you would like on the end. So I've just got this little dragon pendant. I'm going to use him for this one. So just take up your 3.75 millimeter ID ring, feed it through your pendant or your bead. Now with this one, given where the loop is, I'm going to attach this to uh, the end rings here. If though I was doing something like this here, this B, where it doesn't have a particular side that has to face, I would actually prefer to come in and grab the second pair like you know we, we did up here. I feel it gives it a better attachment point to do it that way. Um, it balances out um, everything, holds the weave quite nicely I feel. So it really depends on what you're going to attach. If you can attach it to the middle rings there, I would say go for it, do that. I think it looks better. That's my personal take on it. If though, if your pen, pendant or whatever it is that you've chosen to attach doesn't enable you to do that, because if we do that, it's going to end up facing the wrong way for our toggle class, because we need that toggle class to face us. And as you can see, if I attach the pendant to the middle rings as I would prefer, it's not going to sit properly. So for this particular pendant, I'm going to have to attach to the last pair of rings in the weave. Okay, so just go through the last pair of rings there and close it up. Okay. So you've got this part of your necklace done and all that's left now is to add the chain and the other section of your toggle clasp. Now the length of the chain will depend on your preference. Okay, so I like a long necklace. So for this particular one, I did a piece that was about 60 centimeters long. Okay, it is quite a long necklace, but that's my preference. I then decided to double that chain up so that it was a little bit 
more substantial to look at. You can leave it singular if you want to leave it singular. You can make this necklace as long or as short as you like. So once you've got the length that you want worked out, it's just a matter of attaching one end of your chain to the toggle clasp. So to this section just here. You can do this with your 3.75 millimeter ID rings. Just pop it through the end of your chain and then through the toggle clasp there like that. And then on the other end, do the same, but attach the bar of your toggle clasp, okay? And that's it. Once you've got that all done, uh, your necklace is ready to wear. So with it being this long, I can actually just pop this necklace over my head. I actually don't need a clasp for this, but I like the look of the clasp. It gives it sort of a faux lariat look, which yeah, I quite like. I find sometimes with lariats, I like the look of lariats, but sometimes they can slip and move around and not, and not sit on your neck properly. So this is a nice way of having something that sort of looks like a lariat, but um, will hold its positioning a little bit better for you. But anyway, guys, that's it. That's our faux lariat necklace. Okay guys, well that's it. That's the tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it and um, you have a great time at making up the necklace. It's quite a simple little necklace that you can customise for your own tastes and I think you'll enjoy it. Alright, so thanks once again for popping along and spending your time with us. If you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up here at YouTube, share the video. Don't forget to pop any comments or ask any questions in uh, the comment section down below the video. While you're here, um, have a look around and check out some of the other tutorials that we have here for you. And last but not least, don't forget to give our shop link up here a little bit of love. Check it out, see uh, what tools and components you need to make this tutorial and a lot of the others. Alright guys, thanks again and I hope to catch you sometime in the very near future. Bye now.